quakes, mystery booms and cracks related in Michigan, mid-continental rift, we're going to see the volcanics of the area as well. We recently had reports of unexplained lights coming from the ground, booms, shaking and cracks. We usually see this around the uh, New Madrid seismic zone area. Of course, we've had cracks lately in Ridgecrest after the earthquakes there. We've had cracks here as well in Michigan, as you can see how huge this thing is. And unfortunately, the USGS is not reporting all of these earthquakes. Perhaps it has other work to do in, on the West Coast, New Madrid, I have no idea. But uh, there has been a, a time when, during a period of a week, it seems that people were calling concerning reports of shaking, booms, unexplained uh, noises and shaking of houses as if cannonballs were falling. And we saw this also lately in the English, the England earthquakes. In uh, October of 2010, unexplained ground cracking opened up near Birch Creek, Michigan. And uh, mysterious boom noises reported in Clintonville, Wisconsin. In the spring of that year, similar booms reported south in the town of Montello and unexplained light flashes, mystery booms observed in the town of Baraboo. And there seems to be a, a linear progression of this. This is what Zetas explained, that it, ha it goes from the area of Mexico diagonally from southwest to northeast, cutting through the uh, continent midwest up to Lake Superior. According to Zeta Talks of April 2012, they say we have described the North American bow as one where the tip of Mexico moves west to the top of the continental the continent Alaska and Canada remains in place. It pulls the entire continent to a bow shape, which can only be revealed by the New Madrid adjustment, tearing the continent at a diagonal so that the southwest of the U.S. and Mexico move west and down while the lands of the Mississippi are torn away. We're talking about the uh, New Madrid seismic zone, which is basically should have been called New Madrid Rift Valley. And uh, that area is tearing away, coming towards uh, the Atlantic Ocean. So um, the lands east of the Mississippi torn away. In the meantime, the stress of the bow is pulling the St. Lawrence Seaway apart, where resistance is slight. And they mention, they say, Wisconsin is pulling apart, and the rock strata are being also separate, separate, uh, allow separation readily. And it's not surprising that a crevasse in the Michigan Peninsula has been joined by booming in towns as south as uh, rock snaps in diagonal lines towards Mexico. And Mexico very recently had an adjustment at its tip, driving the tip over the Caucasus Plate. The land having moved westward, adjustment moved up along the coast. The Baja coast affected literally touches San Andreas Fault, and it's no surprise for these bow adjustments to occur almost simultaneously. And um, I don't want to go into uh, the volcanics of the area. The volcanics of the mid-continental rift system, um, they did uh, think that there would be, because of volcanic activity, uh, crude oil or shale oil under the tip of Lake Superior, from what I just read now, they did not find. They drilled, but they did not find. Now, the abstract having to do with the uh, mid-continental rift volcanic rock systems, the continental rift uh, produced approximately uh, 1.3, 10 to the 6 kilometers, cubic kilometers of igneous rock over a rift length of 2,200 kilometers. Mid-Continental Rift System, MRS for short. It's one of the largest as well as oldest flood basalt provinces. 
and both geophysical and geochemical evidence suggests that magma production resulted from decompression melting of a large hot mantle plume centered beneath what is now Lake Superior. These rocks are now exposed only around Lake Superior in Ontario, Michigan, Wisconsin, and Minnesota. And in East Central Minnesota and Northwest Wisconsin, the rest of the igneous rock rift products are known from geophysics scattered drill holes. The plateau lavas are geochemically bimodal, dominated by olivine thaliutes, many of them high AI, transitional basalts, basaltic andesites, and significant volumes of rhyolite, especially in Minnesota. Structural and stratigraphic relationship of these lavas indicate that they were erupting in several distinct plateaus, each of which subsided centrally as rifting intensity, intensity shifted in time and place along the uh, mid-continental rift system. But age determinations so far show no unzipping progress or hotspot progression from Lake Superior to the extremities in Kansas, southeastern Michigan. The maximum known time span of the mid-continental uh, rift sift system, the Cowenan magmatism from recent uh, pre uh, precise UPB zircon work, the greatest bulk of the eruption and intrusive activity for exposed rocks occurred during a magnetically reversed interval around 1,108 to 1,105 million years ago, especially during a magnetically normal interval during 1,097 to 1,094 million years ago. Now, the rift today, near the lake, rocks produced by the rift can be found on the Isle Ile Royale and Cowenan Peninsula. Formation in the uh, Cowenan Rift contains enough organic carbon to be considered potential source of petroleum. All identified as Precambrian has been found seeping out of the non-such shale in the White Pine Mine in Michigan. A few deep wells were drilled to explore for oil and gas in rift rocks as far southwest as Kansas. No oil and gas were found, but the explorations did make some deep rock samples available. Michigan Copper County and Upper Peninsula and Isle Royale contain major native copper deposits in Cowenan Cowen uh, Age rocks associated with the rifting. Copper. So what began as mysterious ground cracks near Birch Creek, Michigan, in late 2010, is seems to be related to the many mysterious booms heard in south of Wisconsin. October 2010, massive and unexplained ground cracks opened in uh, Birch Creek, Michigan. Mysterious boom noises reported in Clintonville, Wisconsin. Now, the stretch zone incidents, where rocks pull apart or snap creates booms and vibrations and hums, they drop bridges uh, that lost their moorings or snap gas and water mains, they created sinkholes and crevasses and are not considered earthquake incidents, so. Quakes occur when rock border slides along each other or push under one another, creating jolts and series of jolts. And the stretch zones accidents only happen when major plate movements is occurring, usually silent, uh, they're usually silent so don't get the attention that jolting earthquakes get. A bridge slips off its mooring and is uh, attributed to heavy trucks or poor construction. A sinkhole appears and is attributed to groundwater erosion. A building implodes and is attributed to settling, even though the building may have been there for centuries. And with the increase in incidents with stretching zones and the moaning and humming and booming coming from the ground, the establishment is left in a dilemma. Scientists are chastised, forbidden from mentioning earth wobbles, presence of anything outside our solar system, 
perhaps uh, giving us a gravitational pull and uh, somehow jolting our Earth. So how to explain the incidence? Um, well, okay, there are those that say that there could be planet X Nibiru, or it could be, for example, as simple as uh, the monthly cycles of the moon, or strong storm surges. We don't know. Now, looking at maps of Wisconsin, one sees that Green Bay is at the point where the peninsula is pulling away from the mainland of Wisconsin. So at the rip point, looking further inland along the line of rip, we see Lake Winnebago, a large body of water formed over an area that had sunk in the past. And when we describe St. Lawrence Seaway ripping open during the pole shift, or just regularly, because it's in effect part of the New Madrid seismic zone, Real Foot Rift Valley, and the ripping process which began since wobbling tugging of the earth. Uh, the uh, Mississippi River falling at Minneapolis. And uh, much earlier ripping of the Black Hills in South Dakota. The ripping open of the seaway is going to affect Wisconsin as it is in heavy traffic lane. Now the Wisconsin booms are the result of an increasing earth wobble, it says here on pole shift that I'm reading from, uh, due to something the, the approach, approaching planet X. The most violent push of the wobble occurs when the sun is high over the Pacific and Europe is in the dead of night and the globe is pushed violently north as magnetic north pole shift, pole, north pole of the earth comes up over the horizon. So this corresponds to late evening and early morning hours when the Wisconsin booms were already heard. Review of the bedrock geology confirms that Clintonville, situated directly over a boundary between two different types of rocks, thus is more subject to tearing. And we have reports from booms shaking and ground continue to shake in Clintonville, boom shaking and mystery booms. Uh, and the town is asking questions as to why this is happening. And these uh, went on for about a week from what we see here. Loud noises in Wapaka County, series of booming noises woke up residents in Clintonville Police dispatchers handled about 150 phone calls from residents uh, between uh, the uh, midnight and early in the morning. Shaking and booming continued sporadically throughout the day. And um, there are, uh, this, this is, I have to admit, an area that I have not examined at all, the Mid-Atlantic Rift. And uh, it seems that it's connected to the New Madrid seismic zone, where we have had a tremendous amount of activity lately. And uh, as I said in my previous video, we have had Lake Superior December 1st earthquake of two magnitude, 18 kilometer depth. So that's not too shallow. And uh, of course, the St. Lawrence Seaway has been tremendously active lately. With magnitude 3.5 quakes, for example, November 15, 18 kilometers depth again, and uh, 18 kilometers depth again, November 28, 3.2 magnitude. And uh, let's remember that the East Coast, of course, has a lot of volca volcanic, um, known volcanic areas. And also the seamount with 30 volcanoes just uh, across from Maine, uh, Boston, and uh, giving uh, volcanoes all the way to up to Montreal, where I used to live. So I'll leave links below for you for this. Obviously, this has to do with the Mid-Atlantic Rift, and it's a rift because it's, uh, it was a rift that was filled up. Uh, but it could become a rift again, it seems. Especially after the 
a tremendous amount of earthquakes that we had in New Madrid seismic zone. And again, I'd like to thank our friend Kevin Lancour from that area that is sending us this information because without his help, I would not be able to post this video. Thank you so much, Kevin. Thank you for everything. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.